Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today we're gonna to talk about how to do free motion lace applique sewing on four different machines. That's right, this is a highly requested video. A lot of you have been asking for this. No, I'll, I'll cut straight to the chase. No, you do not have to have the machine that you typically see me sewing on in order to do the free motion lace sewing. So uh, just to show that, I'm going to show you how I would do that free motion sewing on four different machines, okay? And as usual, there's a lot of different names for this. There's applique stitch, there's the free motion, like we said, and there's even um, a foot that you can get for your machine that's called a stippling foot or an applique foot. So here's the first machine I'm going to show you on. This is a treadle and it still has the hand crank. Um, it works lovely and I've got this set up for doing the free motion lace applique stitching with invisible thread. So this next one, I love sewing on this one. This is a Singer 15, uh, super popular machine. If you don't already have it, you can probably find it at a yard sale. I've got that one set up and I usually have an Ivory Guterman set on that all the time. This is the machine that you see me do the lace applique free motion stitching on the most. It's my Juki. And finally, I'm going to show you how to do this type of stitch on a very common home machine. That's right, you can use a common home machine to stitch this kind of lace sewing as well. So here we go. Now, many of you who follow me, by the way, hit subscribe if you do not yet follow me on here, but uh, many of you are familiar with this machine that I set up specifically for the free motion sewing of lace. I have an entire video about that and I'm going to link to it below in the video description. Um, but basically with this, you're going to layer tool and then I've got a little bit of Chantilly lace on top of that. I made sure my presser foot level lever was down and then here I go. I'm working the treadle right now with my feet and you can see that applique foot going up and down, also called a uh, stippling foot like I mentioned before. And it's gonna sew this lace down for us. It's gonna almost like uh, fuse these two layers together um, you can see it there, nice tightly sewn. And of course, after you do the stitch, you're always gonna wanna go in and press this or iron this. I did modify this machine specifically for this task, and I show you how to do that in that refurbishing video, but I have removed the feed dogs from this machine, so there's nothing kind of pulling against the free motion action. Next up is my Singer 15, um, that super common machine that I'd mentioned earlier. The modifications are the same. I remove the feed dogs. Now I make sure the presser foot is lowered. This also has that stippling or darning foot on there. And this machine flies, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> the video is hardly keeping up with it, um, but a couple of uh, points to note here. With this one, I am sewing with the Ivory Guterman. I keep her threaded up with that as opposed to the Ivory. I do have that tensioner knob set to zero, and of course, we'll still need to press this when we are done. Next up is my Juki that you do not have to have, but if you would like one or any of the things that you see me using, you can always go to the products page of my website and I have all of these things linked too. So anyways, here we go. Um, same, same setup here. Uh, this time you can see I don't have a special foot. I'm literally sewing this with my right narrow zipper foot <laughs> it's not a special foot at all i can use my all-purpose foot whichever one i want to use the whole trick to doing this on the juki is to use this knee lift to raise the presser foot halfway that's going to get the tension off of it just enough and lift the presser foot for me and the feed dogs don't, don't cause any trouble at all so with this, it's just super easy to convert the machine from regular sewing to free motion sewing. That's why you'll find me using this machine when I just need to do it super quick. 
Now here's the one I get asked about the most. How do you do this on a home sewing machine? Well, it's very simple as long as it has the button to be able to drop your feed dogs. Let me show you how. On this Janome, I reach around to the back and I see this little slider button. Watch this. Boop, there they go. It drops the feed dogs out of the way for you and you can move this button back and forth on the fly. So this is actually a really simple machine to switch back and forth from regular sewing to free motion. Please just take one second while I put this piece back on and hit the like button for me. It really helps out so much. Also, please hang in to the very end of this video because I do have one universal tip that you have to do for all of these machines to get the stitch to work right. All right, so on this Janome, I'm going to take the presser foot off. I'm going to lay my two fabrics under there, lower the presser foot, even though there's nothing on there. And again, you can buy that darning foot if you want, but I just want to show you there is this method where you don't use a presser foot at all, and it's just fine. So same process. I'm sewing. I'm moving this around. I'm holding the fabric taut with my hands. You can see what happens. It gets a little skippy if I let go of it. But basically, this is almost like drawing with the thread. That's why they call this also freehand embroidery. Some people do almost draw beautiful pictures with the stitching from their machine. So that's super exciting that you can do that as well. Same process here. It is um, stitched together almost invisibly even though I'm using the Guterman thread and we just need to press it and we're ready to go. Thank you for hanging in there with me. The very last tip that is super important for me, I always use a size 18 ballpoint needle. That never fails me. If I try to use a smaller needle, no matter how fine the fabric, if I try to use a smaller needle, um, I, it just runs into trouble. It's problematic for me. But the 18 just seems to go through nice and smooth. Even if it is a fine fabric, just make sure your needle is fresh and that should work for you. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section down below. I do try to always answer those. And don't forget, you can go to my website, bridalsewingtechniques.com, for a list of the products that I use, the machinery, my iron, my machines. And then you can also get these digital products, my contract pack, for sewists, which is super helpful for your business, and also my workbook that can help your business grow. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.